Hello, my name is Rachel, and I don't know about you, but I couldn't find a single decent tutorial on how to make a playable lightning rail or tabletop train except for Wylock's Diesel Punk Skytrain. And given that my D&D party was about to face an Eberron station encounter, I thought to myself, yeah, I want to make that. Make it modular. I have a huge set of these true tiles that are going to be just the ticket for basing our model on. Each square is one and a quarter inches, which is the grid size I used for almost all of my modular stuff, but you could absolutely make this according to a one inch tile system. This base that I'm cutting is about four and a quarter inches by 18 and a half inches, which is enough to make a grid of three squares by 14 squares and have space around the outside to later put the train car lid. Now, you may be wondering what I'm gonna do with that empty row since True Tiles only comes in two by twos and won't fit. We'll get to that after we construct the exterior of our train. I want a border for the tiles so they don't go off the rails and I'll be able to change the interior as I like. So I've measured the depth of a tile and marked that down for the border height, which I'm cutting out of some base wood that I got from my local hobby shop. I'm sanding the top edges down for easy insertion and then chopping them down to size so they're going to fit snugly around my tiles. Then it's a matter of gluing. I've marked on my baseboard where I want the inside edge of the border to line up and I've placed my ruler as a guide rail to keep the piece on track. I use a mix of tacky glue for adhesive strength and hot glue for adhesive speed. While that's clamped and drying, we're going to move on to the outside of the train car. I'm largely basing this on Wylock's video and design, except I'm making the caboose, since my party was racing to get onto the back of the train. I loved Wylock's idea of using a Pringles can to create that rounded roof, and one can will be the perfect length for 14 of these one and a quarter inch squares. After cutting and prying off the bottom, I took another paper, wrapped it around, and marked the overlap to fast track finding the full circumference. Then I laid the paper flat and divided that length by half and half again and transferred my marks back onto the tube. That gets me four equal enough quarters of the can that I'm gonna couple and essentially weld together with some glue. I wanted the walls to be consistently two and a half inches tall, so I taped the edge of the roof along a measurement line on my cutting mat, which allowed me to then align the bottom of the wall section along another measurement line exactly two and a half inches below. Then glue in place and add tape uh, and tape and also more tape. Once glued in, I'm gonna mark sections of the wall where I want the vertical beams and windows to be placed. I decided on one inch squares for the windows and then based everything around that measurement to what I think looks good. I used one of the one inch cutouts as reference for the window frames and I'll make the vertical seams the same width. A fun trick for using the grid on a cutting mat is to square up your piece on the X axis, have your desirable strip width as overhang over the Y axis, and then line your ruler up and cut. Hmm, I guess my teacher was right. Math is useful and fun. No, that's me. We also need a baseboard, so I'm just using a strip that I cut from poster board and creasing it against my ruler for a nice distinct fold. Now we get to start gluing more things into place. Starting with the baseboard. Oh my God, mom, don't look at the shots, train wreck. Okay, okay, redeemable, redeem. Ah, much better. Continuing with the side of the train, I'm using a wooden dowel as a sort of rail above the windows. Once again, using the PVA and hot glue combo here, and then just using some tape through the windows as clamps. Then for placing the window frames, I did have to trim most of them to get them to fit exactly around the windows, but oh, yeah, just one more guy there. And uh, yeah, that's the window frames in place. Next stop to the top. I cut a length of XPS foam to 18 inches long by one and a half inches wide. If you would like an explanation on what this pink stuff is, please see. My ruler is pretty well one and a quarter inches wide, which was perfect for me to trace along because I want to make the top playable with that one and a quarter inch grid in the form of metal panels. Don't at me if this is in no way accurate to any train design ever. <gasps> anyway, 
The mistakes continue with this step because if I were to make this again, I would not have shaved down the corners along the roof like I'm doing here. I thought this would help it merge better with the Pringles portion of the roof, and wow, did it ever not do that. You'll see later. Here, I'm marking and scoring the foam metal panels and using a little screw to mark the bolts or whatever it is that fastens the roof panels. So here's where we deal with the consequences of shaving down the foam. You can see all the unsightly gaps, which I end up filling with a lot of hot glue from the top and from the underside. I also made sure to use the floor of the train to help keep the wall straight during assembly. And then to hide the uneven seams, we're gonna cover them with a long strip of poster board. Hmm, now no one will ever know. And while we're here, we might as well add some extra flair. Chugging along to the very back side of the caboose, I'm using chipboard and a little door template to gauge the design of the metal frame. I sort of measured, but really just went with what I thought looked good, which was this. I'm cutting a large door into some cardstock, which is also going to be the wall under the metal frame. I want the door to be inset, so these flat bones are connected to the frame bones, the frame bones connect to the door bones, the door bones connected to the Oh, no, we're all done. To attach the back end to the main body of the train, I cut a thicker strip of poster board and wrapped it around the sides and top of the piece we just made. I had to notch it along the bend for smooth coverage, but I think it worked out all right. To attach it, I also needed to make a small cut on each side to fit around the wooden dowels. Then it's a nice snug fit. Commuting to the opposite side, our passengers need a way of boarding the train, so we're going to make some steps out of more base wood. These are three quarter inches wide strips, and each step is about a half inch deep, so they're still playable. I'm jumping tracks with this wall here and going straight to gluing it on, then trimming off the excess. For the stairs, we're going to realize that this angle doesn't work. Time to switch tracks. Here, I cut a frame out of chipboard, a door out of cardstock, and a door frame out of cardstock. Then I had a bright idea. Then it's another poster board strip to give the train a more polished look. We're almost done with the building exterior. Wait, wait, what was that? Go back, stop, enhance. We'll train our sights on this for later. I'm using a hair roller that I bought from the dollar store to cut into this ladder. Yet another Wylock trick. Then it gets super glued on. Finally, onto the what on earth are we gonna do about that empty row of tiles problem? Well, the light at the end of this tunnel is make them. We're gonna make them. Each wood tile has three wood planks on it. So I divided one and a quarter inches by three and then made it a bit smaller to have some space for gaps between the planks. The length of each plank is also just under one and a quarter inches. I'm using a pointy but not too pointy tool to draw some cartoony wood grain to match the printed tiles. This foam piece is, you guessed it, a one and a quarter inch square. You can see the nice spaces between and around the wood. And you can see that the height sits really well beside the true tile. Then the last stop here before painting are the seats of the train. I wanted to make something that would fit the train vibe and could be used in other settings too. So I settled on a simple cushioned wooden bench. I'm carving off all of the corners so that when I go to squash the edge, the corners don't leave this weird seam. Then I imprint a circle with my unclicked pen, carve some diagonal lines and lightly press down with the tool to give that cushiony look. The wood part beneath is a block of foam surrounded with four wooden walls and then glued under the cushion. Overall, the bench is about two inches long, three quarter inches wide, and a half inch tall. This train is now primed for painting. I tried a Zenithal highlight for the first time and it turned out okay. My paints are also too cheap to show any of it through when we're done, but that's also okay. I'm going with a navy, brown, and tan color scheme here, and it took several coats to get a nice solid color. I also masked off areas on the side for nice straight paint lines. I hope that was as satisfying to you to watch as it was for me to peel. 
The doors and panels on each end will get a similar color scheme and some very, very careful paint strokes. Then some careless coverage of silver paint over everything else. At this point, it was full steam ahead with getting the job done. Since our session was upcoming and I was reaching the end of the line, so not a lot of bells and whistles with a paint scheme, but it definitely does the job. Subscribe for more quality puns. The interior pieces have also been primed a dark chocolatey brown and will get a nice wettish dry brush coating of brown and then a much drier dry brush coating of tan. Nice. The dry brush wood looks way less edible, thank goodness, and I know you had the same train of thought. The cushions will get a coating of deep red mixed with Mod Podge for firmness, and the wood gets a brown wash. Luxurious. Let's see how all the pieces fit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Eberron Terminus Station Chase Altercation. If you enjoyed this video, look for more terrain ventures in the future. Or why not get sidetracked with some of my other stuff? Here.